I've got some good news and bad news. Well, our good news and will be good news. The disk drive did try to work, though I forgot something. To make this IBM compatible, let's see if I can't focus on that. This is the drive select jumper. Right now it's set on DS0, drive select zero. Now that's how Tandy and a lot of other older computers operated. You, you told it what number drive it was by this jumper here. IBM computers do it through the cable. What I have to do is move this and change this to drive select one and that will make this compatible with the cable. That's it. That's all you gotta do. You got DS0, DS1, DS2, and DS3. Um, it did try to do something, but of course they both came on at the same time because they were both accessing the same bus. So they were accessing the same line. So we'll slide it in. And, and if this disk drive does work, it'll just stay in this computer. This is a 486 DX266 megahertz computer. And it's had a blank spot there. I think a 360k drive will be good right there. It'll make a good transfer computer. Transferring high densities to low densities and whatnot. Okay, I have to drive select right. Go ahead and power it on. See if it behaves correctly. Got eight megabytes of RAM. So far, so good. Now I'm hoping at the boot disk. I don't know. <laughs> we'll find out in a minute. All right. I don't have it secured in there yet. I'm just kind of sitting there. We got Windows 95 DOS booted. And I have a format command. That was what I was checking. Format B. There we go. Wow. It's going. I'm brought another disc along to see if the heads are aligned. If the heads are not aligned, it won't read that disc. That's not necessarily the disc drive. It might be just bad media. I'm sure it needs to be cleaned. I've got a cleaning disc I can stick in there. But I wanted to see how it would perform on its own, and it just completed the backup. No volume label. There we go. 362K. It found 10K in bad sectors. I'll be darned. Check disk. Okay, now let's see it formatted. See if it'll play that game on there. Oops. Awesome. Oh heck, that was worth the cost of the whole auction right there. It was just the disk drive that works. <laughs> oh wow, that plays way too fast on a 486. This is for an XT 1.4 or 4.77 megahertz computer, and this is a 66 megahertz computer. Let's go ahead demo 
It's a 3D Tetris kind of game. Pretty cool. <laughs> well, all right, the disk drive works. Let's uh exit out of the game. Quit. Come on, there we go. Did I hit quit? Yes. Go back to the A drive. We'll do this copy. B drive to B drive. Insert source disk in drive B. And we'll just make a copy of that disk. Insert source disk in drive B. And it says, then it says insert source disk in drive B. There it goes. Well, that rust must just be surface rust on that, on those motors. It's not affecting anything. Just can't no. All right, we'll put this one down and see. There we go. That's good enough for me. All right, so that just drive out of that Tandy 1000 EX works perfectly. All right, it's found a new home in a 486 DX2 66 megahertz computer. I love this board. This thing has got onboard Adaptex SCSI built into it. That's just, and an IDE. I could put either one. I, and it's got an external SCSI port on the back, 50 pin. And I've got some external SCSI drives that will plug right into this computer. That'd be pretty cool. I actually have two of these computers. They're both identical. So that'd be pretty neat to have that set up going. Anyways, thanks for watching.